All right, so welcome to the uh, very last uh, bonus edition of Mistake Identity. Before season two uh, kicks off, I'm uh, really excited about that. And as you can see, the sun is here, Jordan. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, I'm about food all the time. And this episode actually is uh, in conjunction with our paid partner, Buffalo Wild Wings. And Jordan got the chance to go and uh, get some stuff to sample. And we're gonna start with that. What you got, Jordan? So I started with some Asian zing boneless wings. Asian zings, I feel like the sauce you can never go wrong with at Buffalo Wild Wings, always my go-to. And then I also have um, this Desert Heat, which I'm excited. It was on like one of the hottest ones, but it's a dry season. So I'm excited to see, is it really hot? All right, let's um, go. But then obviously, so I, 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 let me see. Let me see how it looks first. Let me see. Let me see the first one. Let me see the first one you're gonna try. Let me see. This is the Asian zing. That's boneless, right? Yeah. I'm an old school. I like the bones in, but okay. Uh, less, ahead. less messy. Less messy. Uh, go ahead, taste it. And let me know what you think. Asian zing is always the way to go. It's spicy. What's it like? It has a little spice to it, but it's also like sweet, kind of. It's very nice. It's a nice little okay. mix. That's the other one you got? But it also has a little kick to it. Hold up, I'm gonna finish this one. This is really good. While you're doing that, by the way, so uh, there's a link that you all can go down to the show notes if you're on the audio podcast. You can go and click, and uh, you can check that out and get some uh, good deals on Thursday, especially. Um, I have it on my social media page as well, the link. Maybe Jordan will uh, as well on this page. So uh, make sure you click the link and check out uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, either try what Jordan is trying or try your own thing. They have a lot of things there. All right. This next one is Desert Heat. This is a dry rub, so I was hope it's, it's, it's not. Heat. Okay. Huh? Desert heat. Interesting. Desert heat. One of its own. It's, it's on the um. It's two of the hottest ones, and this is one of them. I didn't know you even eat hot food. So okay. <laughs> doesn't seem hot. So it doesn't seem hot. It's like some um pork chop seasoning. Now, did you? Choose those two randomly, or how did you how did you decide which ones to get? They have, they have a lot of options. Well, I always get Asian Zing. Asian Zing is always my favorite. I always love that one. Have to always get that one. And um, every time I go, when I used to go as a kid, I used to always try the hottest one. So I wanted to try one of the new hottest ones. It's not it's not it's not like really really spicy though. So I think that's it's a good one. It's not bad. How many, really spicy. how many do they come in? What did you get? Um. So today's the deal buy one get one so i got um i think it goes six of each okay all right and that's that be gone by the end, end of this uh recording so uh again make sure you all check on the link buffalo wild wings and uh check them out uh next time when jordan goes i'm gonna have him try something that i pick why did i pick and see if he can take it and handle it and we'll let you all know uh all about that uh, so while we're here, we're here because so Jordan got the chance to go to Hawaii, and I thought that many people, including me, uh, have never had the chance to go to Hawaii. So uh, why not, you know, explore and hear about uh, what there is to do and what all uh, Hawaii has to offer? Because he was there for ten days, um, and I think that's something that people would want to hear about. So um, Jordan, tell me first of all, first of all. Why was Hawaii chosen? Um, so my roommates are fortunate enough to go every year for Christmas. Um, and every year when they um, go, like something always happens or I end up not being able to go with them. So this year I was like, you know what? I'm going to make it. And like, we have to go. Like Hawaii is the place we're going for Christmas. I, I, I was like, we have to, that's the place. So um yeah that's why we decided always it's always pretty much hawaii for christmas all right so let's go down the route here so you left from here on the plane and went where um we landed in san francisco we had a layover in san francisco it was only like an hour really quick but 
um, before you actually get to Hawaii, you need to get a wristband. So you have to fill out this like travel thing online and put in your vaccinated vaccination status or your negative test results. The line was super, super long around the um, airport in San Francisco. It was even longer at the one that's in LAX because um, my roommate, her sister stays in LAX. So it was like both of the lines was long. So we ended up going into, um, we all had United cards. So we went into the United um, Lounge and United Lounge, we just got the wristband, got a bunch of free food and snacks, free drinks before the flight to Hawaii. Cause the flight to Hawaii was the longest flight. Flight to LA was like four hours. Flight to Hawaii was like five and a half. Yeah, I, I can't do past two. I don't know why. But it was great. I used to be able to when I was younger, but um, all right. So, and, and by the way, Hawaii, not only is it the most expensive state to go to, it's also has, they have the strictest protocol when it comes to COVID. Uh, and I was doing my research for a cruise a while back. They have all these rules about uh, what you need to do to even get into um, Hawaii. So you flew to California, then you took five hours and you were in uh, Hawaii. I would have got the plane went to sleep. I'm sure you didn't, but uh, when you uh, landed, when you landed, what'd you do? What was the weather like? What was, what would you see? What was the atmosphere? Well, was- when I landed, um, it was still not kind of early, but kind of early. It was like three, four before sunset because time goes back. It's like four hours behind. But when I landed, I was like, it just shocked me because everybody talked about Hawaii and it's like tourists this and tourists that. And being from Chicago where everything is so like built up and infrastructure we was literally getting off the plane and walking on the um the runway almost you know so it was like i was just amazed on how also mind you when i went to hawaii i went to the big island which is a big island is the biggest island but it's the uh, least populated island of all of, like the four main islands so like it's more traditional it's more of like they call it the old hawaii way so it wasn't like infrastructure it wasn't like a big terminal it wasn't indoors everything was outdoors and as soon as i got there i was like oh this temperature it's it's great like as soon because you know i just came from chicago which was like at least 20 i think 10 before i left so it was it was it was very amazing to see how it was just kind of very more traditional and not as um built up around it but also as soon as you start to land all you see is lava rocks so, and i was like the person sitting next to me i was like i re-landed in lava rocks like i'm very confused but since it is um the biggest island and slash the newest island and it's still growing it's still, it takes, it's going to take hundreds of thousands of years for those rocks to form soil and dirt and trees and all that to start to form. So it's pretty cool. It's really interesting. All right. So, you know, you got off of the uh, plane and got your bags, whatever. Like, I'm assuming you got a car and you went to where first? So we went directly to the hotel, which was like the Apuna Beach Resort, which was about like 30 minutes, 25 miles, something like that away from the, um, Away from the hotel, but it's like one main road that you just take. And as you take it, you you just look around and you see hills of lava rocks. Um, you see the graffiti out there. You know how we use spray paint and stuff. They literally use like something like a white chalk and then they use it on the dark lava rocks. And that's how they do their graffiti. It was really cool. Um, and we just drove straight to the hotel. And when you get at the hotel, right when you get out, all you would see is the um, ocean. Like it's like the whole ocean view. And it, it was. It was amazing. All right. So what was, so when you, when you landed, got to the hotel, it was around what time there? It's about like 4.35 almost. All right. And again, I would have went to sleep. I'm tired. But what, what did you do first? Um, first day we went to a pizza. It was like a little pizzeria. It was a Hawaiian pizzeria. Um, very interesting. At first, I did not like it. I'm not going to lie. I did not like it at first, the first time we went. But we ended up going back. And I don't know, maybe it was just because I was jet lag and I was, I don't know. But the second time we went back, I demolished the pizza. It was, it was great. Um, but we went to go get some pizza and we just walked around the, um, the hotel and saw where we was. Because the, the view was just beautiful. And then we just sat at the beach because we were at the Reddit Beach um, to see the sunset. All right. So then uh, um, day two. Okay. Now, by the way, so I'm back here in Chicago, obviously. And uh, I know that Jordan is going the most expensive place in the world and they had all these protocols whatever so um i'm back in chicago a little worried like okay all right so you know what's gonna happen and um uh i completely forgot the time difference right you've got a time difference like okay I'm, I'm assuming that jordan's okay he hasn't said anything and uh you know and this is around like three or four i'm like okay 
I'm assuming he's okay. Had heard from him like around seven or nine. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm assuming if he needed my help, he would have called. You know, he would have. So uh, I went to bed, and it was at midnight that um, I got some pictures and I got a message from you. So I'm like, oh, I forgot. Um, it was a big time difference. So um, I could tell that you were extremely uh, busy from the moment you landed in Hawaii. It was like being like, you know, people are starstruck, but I was just sitting there like, it was just amazing. I was just looking at everything. Because so everything me, was so tell beautiful. Me, tell me some of the things you did on your second day there. And I will say this, that um, uh, I am, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the things that you brought back a little bit later, but oh, yeah. um, they're pretty cool. So what did you do on your second day? Second day, we went to... Um, like a couple of little, um, little restaurants, but one of the restaurants I went to, I just show you this. One of the restaurants I went to, literally, um, it was it was right by the um, beach, right by the ocean. I should say that's right by the ocean, and it was seafood. And it's been there for um, I think it was about 40, 50 years. But they end up building something in front of it, so I end up buying a T-shirt that says, "It says thanks a lot, beautiful downtown." Kauai, hey, it's on Big Island, Hawaiian, but pretty much this is the sunset now because we were sitting there doing sunset. This is the sunset, and then this is now what they build, so you don't really see the sunset, just blocking the whole view. It was just pretty, it's like pretty cool for things like that. Um, and it was a really good restaurant. That restaurant had really good food. A lot of the restaurants, since it's right by the oceans and right by the, the fish that they have right over there, was mahi mahi. They had fresh mahi mahi, and it was like fried or grilled, and it was so so good. Um, and then we went to like the grocery stores and we went to Costco. So like you said, everything is expensive in Hawaii. Everybody knows that. Everybody that stays there, all the tourists that um, comes there knows that. So everybody goes to Costco. Costco was like, it was like walking through the concourse at Wrigley. It was, it was so crazy. I was sitting there like, I, I got to go back to the car. This is, this is too much. But that's what everybody do to save money and get as much as possible with a buck so but yeah that's what we pretty much did the first day and we started making my ties and we was going to the beach in the pool <laughs> and it's funny you know i was and I, and I told you this already that uh you know so hey, my jordan is the most expensive place in the world i just know he's gonna call me every day for some money every day he's gonna say i need this i need that and you didn't do that at all except for one day but it was for a good reason the third day which was uh, and uh, by the way so you you know it's funny because um i didn't actually read the Read the full text you sent me. I just read like I need whatever, and I didn't, didn't read the rest of it until today. So I, for this show, I went back to read. <laughs> I went back to read what you wrote uh, because it was a long text. I'm just like I saw the first line. I need X amount of money. Boom, here you go. Uh, but today, when I read the text all the way through, oh, that was a pretty you know good reason to uh, ask for that money. So go ahead and talk about uh, what you ended up buying. Um. I don't know. It's, yeah, I bought it, I guess. Um, but what I ended up getting, which I, I knew I was going to get it from when my um, roommates came back, because both of my roommates have this um, have gotten tattooed by this person. And I really love the tattoo. So got to Hawaii and I ended up getting being able to find a guy. Let me see if I can get a better picture or a better view. But it's an uh, evil bird. So the evil bird, this is the beak down here. This is the wings, and then this is the tail slash the feet. The evil bird pretty much is a Hawaiian bird. It means like returning back home, guidance, um, like significance in heaven. It signifies heaven pretty much. And then it also, um, when I was telling him my life story, different things like this, because he just hand drew it on me before he uh, tattooed it. He said that it represented my grandma going up to heaven. Um, and so then you have... Mauna Kea and Kilauea. Mauna Kea is the um, the snow top mountain. It's been dormant. Kilauea is the act of the fire mountain, which you can kind of see. Um, and then, and that just means like, talking about always having balance in life and balancing the decisions I make. And then if you see the diamonds up here, this represents just like different eyes and guidance as well. Um, down here, you see the ferns. Um, the little loops are the ferns on both sides. That represents family members, loved ones, people I lost, and people that are still here with me. But yeah, that's a little bit about my tattoo. Yeah, so tell me how much pain that was. Um, 
Not honestly, I was sitting there cooling the whole time. I was drinking a couple of Modelo's. It was pretty great, not painful at all. Like this one up here was the pain, the pain, like that was pain. Like this was nothing. I was, I was like, I can, I can do more. I told him, I was like, I can come back and get another one. Like, let's keep it going. But that was, a, um, it was, it was actually, I want to speak on that. That was a really great experience. And um, his name is Eugene. He's very creative and inspirational and like everything he do, it's with the purpose and with the meaning and how like, I keep saying this, but creative he is and how he, hand like drafted and made the tattoo to personally personally fit me it was great it was a great story great store um and great environment i loved it and then uh union specific me. check it out if you guys ever are in, on the big island union specific and then you called me and offered to buy me a dolphin and i told you that i, I got no place to put a dolphin uh, in my and I don't have a tank or I don't have a facility to put a dolphin. I thought the, the, the gesture was nice, but you know, buy me a dolphin is a little bit extreme. <laughs> was it a dolphin or was it a whale? I thought you, I thought it was a dolphin. Oh, I saw a whale this the first, the second day I was there. Me and um, the person I was there with, we was in the water and we saw uh, two of them just jump over. And I was like, those whales and we just been like every day every time we go out in the ocean we just be looking for them it was really cool because apparently it's like whale season over there so by whale you mean orca or what kind of whale um i think it is i think it was or what did they say yeah yeah killer whales yeah you you get me into water with some killer whales i'm gone but um yeah you so you call an office by me a dolphin and then i said i can't take a dolphin right now i gotta put it I don't remember that, quite frankly. <laughs> I'm trying to recall, like, I'm trying to think, like, was it a dolphin? I mean, that was, I was, I was drinking a lot. I used to, like, I, I stopped drinking. And then once I got to Hawaii, it was, it was my time, my time, like shots at 9 a.m. But mind you, it was 9 a.m. there, but like 1 p.m., you know, 2 p.m. over here, you know? So it was, it was. It was it was weird. It was it was great though. It was a great time. But I don't remember that. So what else did you what surprise? What else did you uh buy down there? Um buy? Yes. Um I bought some stuff for you. I bought some stuff for my mom. Um I mean for you. What did you buy for you? What else? Um I got this like little cool lava thing. It's a magnet. Um and then I got like some cat magnets. That's like some cool, funny Hawaii aloha things like that. Um, like some shirts like that. Um, not the major, it was just memories. Now, usually when I go on a, a cruise or people go, on, people go on a resort, they go on different excursions and they have all these different things that they do. Um, so what, that was about, what activities and excursions did you do out there in, uh, in Hawaii? None. That was a relaxation thing. We we was trying to go like horseback riding, zip line in the ATMV, but we ended up doing like some hiking. We hiked. Oh, we it was an excursion. We were sweating at the end of it too. Uh, we hiked like one mile down all the way to this. I wish I can share photos, um, but we hiked like one mile down all the way to the ocean line. And it was like a black sand beach. It was like this reflection part of the ocean that came over. It was really cool. We hiked all the way back up um, a couple of times. And we were just at restaurants eating. We went to Kona Coffee, a plantation out there, which was really cool and interesting. We saw like, fun fact, you always think strawberry guava was like strawberry in the guava, but strawberry guava is like one thing. It's a plant. It's like, it's very, it was very, it was very cool. Um, we saw some lava caves, which if you don't know what it is, it's pretty much a cave made by lava. Um, yeah, it was really cool things like that. So it's more like I'm usually always in the city around Christmas. So I see the lights and the decorations or whatever. What what is what does Christmas look like in Hawaii? So on the big island, this is why I love also Hawaii or the big island. I haven't been to the other island, so I can't speak for them, but on the big island, they not something they don't celebrate Christmas because on Mary um on Christmas they had like Santa Claus on the beach chair going around on the beach um but 
they try to limit as much light pollution and stuff like that because they have observatories on top of some of the mountains or dormant volcanoes. So they try to limit as much light pollution. So some of the lights are like orange and dingy, kind of not like the bright blue lights that we used to see in, in the city. So you didn't see much like Christmas lights and different things like that. Also going back to Big Island is the least populated. So it wasn't as many people. It wasn't, they only have, believe this, only at most 200,000 people on that island. That's literally the size of Aurora. You know what I mean? And the island is bigger than, you know, but it's it, it's it's very small and old and traditional. So it wasn't much lightning and different things like that. But they did have Santa Claus on like a um a cart or something like that. But if you would go to, I know Hilo, it would have been it's 1.2 million people out there. So I'm sure you would have saw Christmas trees and lights and stuff everywhere. So when a when a person goes to Hawaii, uh around Christmas on they're in and they're on Christmas, um, Christmas doesn't really matter as much because, you know, um, the experience that, oh, that you're having right now, sort of, do you even remember that Christmas was coming up? I didn't really care. I was like, mm, Hawaii. Because <laughs> I, I, would, I would be like, I, mean, I don't even know how a person would even compete with uh, Hawaii for, Chris, for Christmas um, at all whatsoever. And now traveling on Christmas, that has to be, that has to be not fun. I mean, in my head, it's not. It was actually really fun. Um... There's not a lot of people that's actually, so if you think about it, most people travel the day before, even like for Thanksgiving, most people travel the day before, the day after that's holiday. So on the holiday, you have pretty much nobody there. So our flight to LAX was empty. I had two seats in front of me, two seats behind me, two seats on the right of me, um, all empty, two rows. So these are all rows. Um, my whole row was empty. So it was like all of our flights back home was empty. So it was fine. It was great. Like, I didn't mind it. And I was like, oh, I'm, I just came from Hawaii. I kept complaining about, like, oh, it's Christmas Day, you know? Okay. Uh, so let's move to Christmas. Um, and then uh, uh, Christmas was technically, I guess, Monday for you, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so at what point between Christmas and Monday did you realize, oh, crap, it's about to be, it's, it's Christmas. Now, now it's Christmas. Um, probably when I pulled up in front of your house, I was like, oh, shit. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, I'll say that. Probably when I pulled up. Uh, so let's talk about Christmas. Let me show you what, what you got here for me. So, um, got a few things here from Hawaii that you brought me. Uh, one I probably use every day is... Uh, this keychain, and I believe you said it was it was the only one that had a name that you recognized. Yeah, they didn't have Jordan. They didn't <laughs> have they didn't have um, McKenna, and McKenna is like McKenna Beach in Hawaii. They didn't have my mom's name. They didn't have my brother's name. I was like, what what is this like? <laughs> oh, but their language is only like their language is only like thirteen letters, so it makes sense. <laughs> And then uh, speaking of orcas, uh, there's this. You want to talk about what that is there? By the way, I didn't, I didn't realize that there was a shark tooth in here until I read the, the thing. Yeah, it's um, hand sculpted. I, I forgot, so she read it to me, but if you want to read it, I forgot what it said on it. It's very interesting and it's very, she's very creative and cool as well. Sorry, I'm not going but, uh, to read it, but, but time to read it, but. Uh, and then there is, uh, there's, then there's this, and then there is this. Which all is, um, all of that was handmade and used by, what did they say? They use, they, they use the word like used by the soil and things from Hawaii soil. It was nothing like imported pretty much, which is really cool. And that was from, oh. I'm not gonna, go ahead. So I was like, that's what also what we did. We went to some farmer's market. So like this whole trip, it was just like, trying to be respectful and learning um the culture and the old the old hawaii way uh okay um now i uh brought a lot of stuff i don't go through all of it because of the sake of time but um people came to my house while you were gone because i got this cubs room right and uh people were more impressed by the christmas tree and uh, everything under it than they were 
by the room, uh, especially when I said all, all those from that tree, well, off of Jordan. <laughs> um, and you asked for a big, I asked you, did you want a small Christmas? Did you want a big Christmas? And what did you say? Big Christmas. And go big or go home. Uh, well, we don't, we're not going to be here all day to talk about all the gifts, but uh, what were some of your, I'm sure everybody wants to know anyway, what, what did Frankie Jordan Christmas? What, what, what gifts do you want to show or talk, or talk about? Um, let's start off with these. Uh, best thing that I've ever gotten. I'm, I'm telling you, them Bears games was struggling just like walking to the bus to school, going to work at the other jobs. Favorite, probably one of my favorite gifts I use every time I go outside. You have more pieces today, aren't there? Like four pieces today altogether? It's, yeah, it's, so it's the hat, the gloves, and then big scarves. Um, Photo shoot, which I still have to plan, which was awesome. The photo shoot I really love. Got to figure it out now. Um, the beats, I started to use these. What is that? Oh, yes. Uh, beats, which are pretty fire. The uh, thing that I stood in line for for the first time in my life to get something on a Black Friday. Hey, they're, they're pretty good. They're really good, actually. And then another thing I really liked was this. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, the podcast. I wonder why you like that. The um, podcast magazine cover that you were on. Uh, oh, yeah, the like version of that. Um, and then the last thing, which I can't pick it up because it's plugged in and I use it. That's another thing that I use every day and night is the um, Apple Mini little, um, like a little Siri thing. It's a speaker. The Apple HomePod. Apple HomePod. That's what it's called. Yes, the Apple HomePod. Really good. Love it. Um, roommates hate it. It's kind of loud, but works <laughs> and then uh i guess you're wearing one of them oh yes and then i forgot got this one and then another shirt obvious shirt obvious tees which are also a really comfortable favorite uh, yes. shout out to joey who made some more special yes i have to tell him thank you thank you thank you if you're watching joey jordan so there's a few of what uh a few of many <laughs> yeah, he won't uh have two jackets by the time February gets here, he probably would have opened up everything and used it. But um it was Frank like, was rushing me trying to open everything, like we're gonna be here all day, hurry up. Like uh, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I won't do that again. But um, so we went out to breakfast, which I did not like, by the way. So you know, people don't like to eat and uh, I'm not gonna say the place, but um I did not like that place either. That was not for us. First time I really like food on my plate ever. <laughs> but while we were there, we talked about uh 2022 and some goals and things um uh, of what you want to share what are some of your goals um that you want to share for 2022 um personal educational doesn't matter doesn't matter um personal goal um i want to do is be we talked about no, but the personal goal is for me be less um per, like not try not to be a procrastination procrastinator because I always procrastinate on doing things. Also, I think we talked about this not too long ago though. Was the actually trying to figure out something and do something that's impactful to the minority community and educating and informing people around us. That's one of my personal goals. Educational goal is to succeed and try my best because this semester is going to be hard, which apparently you hear all the time. So let's let's put a pause on that because one time we were in Hawaii, I did get one weird text, not weird, a good text, by the way. So all, and I put this on LinkedIn, my page. So all semester long, Jordan had prepared me. What you just heard right there, what you just heard, is going to be the worst semester. I hate this, the school, this, this work is all, it, whatever jordan went off on all semester and then while in hawaii while in hawaii i'm at home mind my own business and i get a text and what did the text say jordan i got four a's and one b yeah so when you hear jordan complaining about how horrible school is and it's gonna be the worst semester in the history of history of education in america just know that i've seen this movie before and he just sort of prepares me for bad grades and then when it comes out to it, it's usually 
all good. So just know them grades from midterms was not the best. So like I had to work for them grades. It was while also working three jobs. Like that was the crazy part. That's why I was like, this is a lot. Like, but you know, never say never. And you know, I'm up for the challenge. One of the things that I like, though, that I like is that, uh, you know, you are um, taking a more business role behind the scenes with the second identity franchise, I should call it, because it's grown out to all these different things and, um, you know, taking a more behind the scenes role on the business side of it. Uh, so that's cool for me to actually, uh, um, you know, be able to say, oh, OK, well, look my son doing some of the stuff behind the scenes. So that's pretty cool. Sometimes you get an email, if you get an email back. And there's an attitude in that email. It's probably not me. It's probably Jordan replying to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, just so you know, it's not always me that will be replying to email sometimes. So, um, yeah, he, he will cut you. Um, so, I guess that's it. Uh, I am um, going to go out and try some uh, Buffalo Wild Wings myself because uh, you got a sample. Uh, and my sample size was three times out of yours. So um, I'm gonna go out and do that because I love me some food. It's also what is usually the night before the Cubs convention. I'm usually in a hotel getting ready for the convention downtown uh, mm -hmm. with another COVID. Uh, I'm not gonna be in a hotel. Speaking of goals for the year, I think that we are gonna be traveling, possibly. possibly. Uh, one big plan got canceled because of COVID. I wanted to go on a cruise, as everyone knows, it's all I do in life is that. And uh, we were gonna go on a cruise with Jordan out of the blue, uh, who was always opposed to it. All of a sudden, let's go on a cruise. But um, but that got canceled, so COVID. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, other than that, Jordan, any uh, final words for the people? Um, go to Hawaii. <laughs> Yes, uh, plan to book a trip to Hawaii. It was worth. It's worth every penny, dime, effort, sweat, tears, hours you put in. It's. It was. It was paradise in paradise. Uh, yes, uh, gonna cost a whole lot of pennies, by the way. But yes, basically you go. Uh, if you do it right, you can save enough. Look, if you do it right, <laughs> it can. It can be affordable. What the hell you say that? I need to write this down. Uh, if you do, if you save up anything, it can be affordable. I like that. I need to write that down. And if you do it right, not save up. If you do it right. If you book it right, <laughs> book it right, the right times, plan it out right. It, 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 was, it, was, it was honestly though, a great experience. And I'm, I, I, what I was saying is that I was surprised a lot of people, because I understand it's expensive, but a lot of people still like travel like nearby states and California and Los Angeles, um, you know, California. Uh, Florida, Texas, and all these other states, which can be just expensive because some of those have some expensive cities. When they can be simply going to Hawaii, I'm telling you, you're missing out on like Hawaii tops. I, I will, uh, I will, I will probably get there in the next year or two. Year? No, not year. Uh, as you know, I plan on moving to the West Coast in a, in a couple of years anyway. It, but... You're making it seem like it costs you a mortgage to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I'm not going to even, I'm not, whatever. Uh, so, you know, maybe if I didn't have any kids, I mean, it's college. But anyway, um, that's another story for another day. Um, <laughs> you all, make sure you all check out season two of the podcast. It has a new name, by the way, the Mistaken Identity Podcast, Beyond the Ballpark. Um, season two comes up. You might even see Jordan on some special episodes. You heard that before, but I think this is the year that you're going to actually get that to happen. So You did uh, see me last season on some episodes. <laughs> On the TV channel, on Patreon. Yes, that's true. You did. You did. But you may get to hear him on the podcast. So um, that's exciting. Jordan, again, best son ever. Thank you very much. And um, Thank you. Uh, those of you that are watching and are listening, we'll catch you on the next episode of Mistaken Identity. Talk to you later. <laughs>